where people can get paid too much in this country. I, I, you know, why don't we just, just close up shop? You know, we can uh, do what the old Soviet Union did. And watch everybody's pay. I mean, this is it's absurd. Hey, you've seen... I, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the reactions I've been getting since I posted that, that sinful video. No. Oh, you... Oh, I love the one where you said you were the 1%. I am the 1%. Technically, I am the 1% given some of the tax returns I've signed. That was fantastic. <laughs> Got some nasty grams over that one. So, it, <laughs> so, uh, oh, God, whatever. Wall Street bankers, and they're outright just paying a lot of the ethics, right? Oh, Lord. The money is actually in the stock market. All that bailout money is in the stock market. Right. That's why. That's why it's artificially high. Shh. Shh. Stock market. Oh, yeah. The stock no, market's artificially no. high for a lot of reasons right now. You can't say anything about that. That's the whole point of quantitative easing. You remember? Okay, we had the stimulus, and we did all that other crap. The whole point of quantitative easing was to take the incentive away from the bank investing in, in more stable uh, investments uh, versus a loan to out to, the, what, I, I guess, the job, uh, the workforce, right? Because the workforce is very shaky. People are foreclosing. Uh, it's not, the, the rate of return is not as guaranteed as saying what the banks were originally doing and going into bonds and all that stuff. Quantitative easing, one, okay, absorb the toxic assets. And then quantitative easing two, try to lower the demand of bonds to get the uh, the uh, banks. You know, if you take away the let's say if the banks are investing in A and you make A less attractive for the banks to to invest, then that's the sense of what quantitative easing was doing. But it didn't work, so they just moved it to the stock market because you know, they don't feel safe in loaning money. In. Uh, you know, the reality is. Um the, the and more, why, you know, and why should they? Yeah, I'm gonna say though that's why you charge interest. The more rigged the deck is, I mean, if we're gonna rig the deck for no risk, money should be free. Money for nothing and chicks for free. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, all these people that are protesting, show me what equity you have for someone to actually invest in you. What is your equity? You know, what, what, what? So far from what I've seen, I, from what I've seen from like a lot of the, the protesters, there there was a bunch of you know free love. Uh, I heard cases of disease and lice, and just messing up the, the entire area. There was some uh, fecal matter problems. You know, uh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, that's great equity to invest in. You know, it's it's ridiculous. And then I love everybody. Praises Apple products when Steve Jobs is the absolute opposite. He was totally, uh, totally about uh, being a capitalist in, 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 the, in the business sense. And the, oh, but yet, oh, the Apple products, he, Apple's a good company because they're producing this and this. Uh huh. Right, right, right. I, I, I'm laughing at the fact that there are so many of the Occupy people have Macs. And no, you're paying, you're paying. You're, you're ostensibly paying a larger uh, profit margin, i.e., Apple does so well in, in, in what they call the profit market share. I don't know, man. People, are, people have just lost. I, 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 they're, I, they're upset, and this is a backlash. What I love the engineer, the engineer with the with the, with the uh, uh, what was it? The, uh, oh God, he had to show the tax rates in the 1950s being so high, and it was laughable. You know, my wife works in taxes. There were so many loopholes back then that the tax code has expanded because if you uh, if, if you want to create an incentive, because the whole the whole tax code is written to incentivize and de-incentivize someone, and and once a loophole's found, then they make other laws. But because they don't want some to go through, but block out a certain extent, it makes 20, 20 other different codes just to adjust for one loophole. The, the, I, I said that in the back and forth that it was at least what went on in the comments. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, that's really one of my few problems with the hat. And the engineer, the engineer contradicted himself in that own, in, in, in the video. It was funny. He goes, yeah, this is, he goes, 
Even though most people didn't pay this much. <laughs> well, no, that's the thing. Our tax is so... Well, no, that's the thing. I, I cannot count how many times, and it drives me nuts, somebody compares the effective tax rate of a higher tax bracket against their actual tax rate, ignoring the fact that their effective rate is lower, too. And I'm just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's good for the goose is good. But the, 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 you make arguments like that because... Our, oh, you're recording on this. Uh, yeah, I turned recording on a little bit ago, actually. Good, 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 good. Okay, yeah. No, uh, unfortunately, our tax code is needlessly complex. Yeah, because we, like I said, we create, we create incentives and then try to de-incentivize something by creating a code or closing up. A loophole based upon the objective of, the, of, of that specific code, whether you can whether you can have a deduction or not. You know, we have an alternative minimum tax, which is essentially very similar to a flat tax thing, um, versus deduction. But it, it, you know, whatever. It's 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 absurd now. You know, I, I, I remember the banks didn't even want to get the bailout money. Don't we all remember this? The banks were saying, "I don't even want to. I don't. I don't want to have." These, basically, the government participating, uh, having to say so. We don't want any of it, and, and and just let the other banks fail. But no, first first we get we have governmental laws that that create a sub uh, basically a subprime lending. It doesn't even have to be your real estate, just subprime and everything for credit cards for homes. People are, you know people think oh it's just real estate. No, it was credit cards. It was homes. It was cars. Any type of lending. It was seen as unfair because a, a bank typically wouldn't loan out money to somebody who is unstable and didn't have as much collateral or, or equity in them to, to look to, to basically give them money alone. So we get we have legislative laws that create this sub market, which means it's a very risky market. The banks all know it, but they're following guidelines in the law. They want to be they want to make the government happy well but what do you do with risky investments you try to basically marginalize them and the more they do that by offshooting parts and putting them into more stable investments they you know they can break they can break a balance but that makes everything interdependent does it not so they, this goes on and on now I will also blame the banks in part for the short term where like Las Vegas was a problem uh, in the UK, they had the same a asset investment, uh, where they got started to get greedy because so much diversification that was that was happening already from these these subprime uh, lending out. They could re they could acquire fast returns by moving some of the investments around, and that that I would say compounded the problem. So, but the banks that did that were ready to fail, were they not? Well, no, and th th that's the thing. No. And, and honestly, um. My personal opinion is it's not a bad thing when a bank fails. I know. Especially with them being FDIC insured and everything. Yeah. Now, granted, if all the banks fail, uh, the FDIC insurance isn't <laughs> worth the fake paper it's printed on. Uh, but <laughs> all the banks won't fail. But, I mean, that's like a mathematical <laughs> anomaly. You know, that the, the, the thing that was happening, though, is the government intervened and forced mergers. And literally forced toxic, toxic acid absorption, right? And they, they basically made the facts to the banks, and the banks had to do forced markers that they didn't even want to do about. Oh, but the banks are the bad guys. So we have a governmental, fundamentally, a governmental problem. The problem that the banks created, they were ready to fail, but then the government also forced those mergers to, ha to happen so that toxic assets could be balanced, right? They tried to make money as cheap as possible by lowering rates. Then they, that was the Fed, then they, they were doing stimulus, right? They were trying to inject the liquidity, which is trying to cheapen currency even more. And that, the idea is that if, if it's so cheap, you can just throw it out and give it to whomever. Like, if I give it to the small business, who cares? They, it, it, it's, it's cheap enough that I can just give them some and give them some and, and no big deal. But the banks were worried because they knew collection time would start coming. You just can't wash out the toxic assets. Oh, and guess what? The government realizes, oh yeah, our plan was stupid. That's why we have to have quantitative easing. Okay, Mr. Banks, we're going to give you money and then absorb your toxic assets. Oh, okay, well, Banks, okay, fine, fine. 
we still had tons of cheap money for the collection, you know, the the, the, the calling point where, uh, where it won't be cheap anymore is going to come back and bite us in the ass. So let's find some at least achievable returns. The economy still sucks. I don't trust most of these people, and why should I? They don't show any stability. Let's put them in some bonds. Oh, now the government goes again. Oh, you're not giving it out to the economy. Yeah, Mr. Government, we don't want to. It's not stable yet. We want to stabilize it as we will. Let it out for now. We need to get it return we obviously still haven't well uh, don't don't okay you, 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 captain economics you're gonna hate my stance on this but my official stance is banks um and this is by nature of what a bank is a bank really needs especially with the regulation the liquidity and everything else they need a sure bet and by the time something is a sure bet the bubble's ready to pop and that's just the reality of the nature of but for some more stable, right? Yeah. So the card they using too, what is it now? Fine. We're gonna we're gonna lower the bond rates that where you guys are, are, are happy in doing so that now it's less attractive for you. Now, since these are less attractive investments, give out to the economy. Banks are like real sucks, guys. Move it to the stock market. Now I know a lot of this because I like stock analysis programs. And you've been able to watch where the money goes. It's insane. Oh, but it's the banker's fault. No, no, no. It can't be the government and the government creating stupid things and idiotic policies for things. Look, there's, you can, if you want to live in a world where everybody basically is, um, you institutionalize, you basically institutionalize poverty and distribute, distribute assets into a means of, of total... Which is not achievable, by the way. It's not, you're not, not even in communism, socialism, any examples is it really achievable. But I understand that they, they want to achieve this because it's unfair that a person A can have something more than a person B. Uh, it's just... Well, okay, you know what? Even in a communistic society, you wind up having capitalistic tendencies. because All that changes is what's of value. Uh, it's, it's the golden rule, right? You're not discussing economics if you can't understand the very reason why we have economics is because we have inequalities, raw material, to acquiring it, to producing it, uh, to logistical distribution of it, and even to the very consumer who doesn't even consume it equally. So if none of it is equal, Oh, no, 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 bit. We're all equal. We're all the same. We're all identical. Yeah, the only thing you can guarantee is an equal opportunity. If someone has less than the other, as so long as the opportunity exists for them to try to acquire more, great. I mean, that's, that's the whole idea. If you want to get philosophical, then you need to find a way to make things marginalized to the point to where you have reduced the inequality. Where, and you, I would start with the consumers and, and instead of starting with the raw materials going back, and you can maybe get close, but you're going to use capitalism to do it. I think to look at technology and, and, like, and like where cell phones started, where many other products started, and once they become a commodity essentially, they're very marginalized, they become uh, very easy to achieve by all income classes, period. And, and, but, but, you know, it's funny that... Uh, the, well, you, you know what's so funny about that, uh, what you just brought up there? Uh, I, I, I learned this in elementary school. I, I, I'm honestly wondering if this is taught in the school system anymore. But uh, maybe, maybe it isn't taught anymore. But the reality is part of what allowed the middle class to boom is in the late 1800s, early 1900s, we introduced the idea of credit, where people had goods that were too expensive for the average person to afford, so they introduced the idea of layaway and pay over time and so to make it so they had more customers and more people could afford it. And basically, like you're saying, it marginalized all of this stuff because everybody had it. It wasn't just the uber rich had it. It was a growing middle class had access to the base tools, to the base things, to the things they needed. 
and it, it was credit that allowed that to happen. Now the pendulum's gone all the way over here where people aren't buying things they need, they're buying, I want it shiny. <laughs> I can't afford it, I want it shiny. <laughs> Which is a different. I mean, it, 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 the thing of it is, is that uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's kind of like when we were debating with uh, with Jonathan. Yes, have a heart to help people, right? Um, but it's so funny. It, 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 isn't it the same where you watch those nature shows and, and you have that heart to save that animal that's going to get eaten and all that, and we want to intervene. I, I must be missing yeah, that. Some thing. people can understand the saying, "Well, if we intervene, we 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 do more harm than good." Why can't that translate into economics? When you intervene, you do more harm than good. And the other thing is, is the very poor that you are worried about right now will not be the poor next year. It's a constant cycle. Now, I guarantee you, if you go to or try to that achieve that equal out that equal outcome, equal results based economy. The poor of today will also be the poor of tomorrow. It will be the very same poor over and over and over again. There is no asset. There is no asset and, and, and wealth acquisition when it's not even your own property anymore. Private property is bad, man. It's the man uh, keeping you down. <laughs> that's, you, you said I was Captain Economics. That means that's the, you were the one on Twitter that asked me that question. Oh my god, my secret identity has been revealed! <laughs> I was like, who's that would call me Captain Economics? I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> I was taking bets. I'm like, I bet he doesn't remember this is my Twitter. <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, you me about the um, transaction tax. Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm really hoping they don't steamroll that through. Uh, uh, it, uh, it's the last thing that's needed right now. It's it. it, it, it. Okay, so